In this video, we're going to be fixing this Alice Chalmers sickle mower that I had modified in a previous video to attach using a standard sort of a three-point attachment on the back of my Kubota tractor. This old mower was originally had some sort of old Alice Chalmers, I'm guessing some sort of weird proprietary mount system. And you can see the uh, mess of parts there from that previous video that uh, we made this thing work. It works very well. I'm going to roll a clip right now of the thing working to trim trees in the vertical position. I'm trimming trees along the edge of my yard, my driveway, back in the woods. So I'll show you what I'm, I'll show you what I'm doing with it right now. camera on the back of the tractor on that folded down rollover bar it's a big chunk of steel it seemed like the magnets were holding it very well I guess that wasn't the case well I had to take a little break I realized my camera had fallen off the back of the tractor somewhere I come walking around walking along the edge of the yard here I knew it had to be within a about a 300 yard stretch see where I've been through here I've made two passes through here That's that new snap, I think it's called snap magnetic mount. It didn't hold up when my tractor ran over it. Broke in half. Hopefully the camera's not damaged. I'm really glad I found it. Cause I was in some really nasty stuff down over the hill. I thought it was gone for good to be honest. And uh, turns out the camera is broken. Uh, it's, a, it's got a screen on the front and a screen on the back. The screen on the front now is busted and won't work. I broke all kinds of stuff yesterday. Okay, now what happened was I, it was working great and I had used it for a few hours. I was back in the woods along a trail and I have lost that footage that where I actually broke this thing. Uh, but I was on a trail, I was uh, in a tight spot I was uh, on a, a, a sort of a hill, running sideways on the hill. Tractor was getting a little tippy. I was watching my loader. I was bumping into a tree. The, the bar was actually bumping into another tree behind me. So I was maneuvering this hill. There was a little stump on the left. So it was causing me to even be tippier. Just trying to watch five things at once. And I lost sight of the fact that that, that bar had come in contact with a big tree. And when I pulled forward, something had to give and it broke this square bar that sits in this socket. That bar runs from that socket to that socket. This flange flips over. Um, so that's what happened. Well, it turns out I lost a lot more footage than I originally thought I did. So this is the bar that was on that machine and you can see that it's broke. This is inch and a quarter square stock and for whatever reason, it's made out of cast iron. Um, this is the one that broke and yesterday when I realized what part I needed, I had recalled that when I was at the auction that I purchased that uh, sickle mower just about a month ago, um, I talked to the, there were three brothers there. One of the brothers had bought two other sickle mowers there that day and I bought the third one. There were only three mowers there that day and he and I were the only people that were bidding on these mowers. So um, it was uh, sort of an interesting thing. We were in sort of an adversarial position that day, um, but uh, really no hard feelings at all. Uh, his, the, uh, the guy that I was bidding against, he was, he was following along with the auctioneer. And when they got done with these sickle mowers, I was done with the auction. And I started loading up, paid my bill, and I was you know, trying to get out of there. And uh, the, the other fella, he was moving along with the auctioneer. He was very interested in some of the uh, Alice Chalmers stuff that was there that day. Um, so anyhow, as I was loading up, his brother came over and introduced himself to me. And uh, in fact, introduced me to their other brother. There were three brothers there that day. Uh, it was Tom who introduced himself. His brother Bob was there with me. And the three of us were kind of chewing the fat as their brother Jim 
was following along with the auctioneer. So Jim is the one that purchased the other two mowers. And Tom let me know that Jim bought one to use and one is a parts machine. So yesterday, when I realized that I need this part, I called Tom. He and I seemed like we got along pretty good and he gave me his phone number that day. And uh, you know, I told him if I ever need anything that I'd give him a call. And uh, Bob was there, Bob gave me his number as well. Bob runs a uh, welding shop in the next town over. And uh, so it's always handy to know the, the guy with the welding shop. Um, so anyhow, I got the, two, of the, two of the brothers' phone numbers. Well, yesterday when I broke that, I called Tom, said, hey, Tom, here's what happened. Um, could I have Jim's number to call him and see about getting this part off of his part machine? So I called Jim up. Tom gave me his number, called Jim. Jim says, yeah, come on over. I don't think I'll need that part. So I got over there and... The machines looked identical. His parts machine and mine at first glance looked identical. I thought they were the same model and everything. But in fact, upon closer inspection, this is a one and a quarter inch where his takes one and a half inch stock. So his, his part would not work for my machine. Well, it just so happens his brother Bob lives right down the road. I'm talking like a mile and a half, something like that away. And I was gonna have to drive by Bob's house on the way home. He says, stop at Bob's. Bob is the one with a welding shop. He said, stop at Bob's, I'll bet he's got that piece. Piece of bar stock. So I stopped at Bob's, he wasn't home. I called him, left him a message. He called me back this morning. He called me back on a Sunday morning. You know, then again, this is a guy that runs a welding business and he's called me back on a Sunday. I thought that was phenomenal. He said, you know what? Matter of fact, I do have some of that inch and a quarter stock out in the, out in the shop. How long a piece you need? I said, 17 and a half. He said, I'll go out and cut it. You think you'd be on your way? Yep, he's got some stuff to do today. So I ran over to Bob's on a Sunday and got this piece of one and a quarter by 17 and a half inches long. This is mild steel where this, the old piece, is cast. Other than that, there's no difference between them. So I was really glad I ran into those guys. Really, really just good country folk. Um, when I went over to Jim's yesterday looking for this part, after we realized the part wouldn't work, we, we just kind of chewed the fat. It was, it was a, it just a good country visit. He was showing me his tractors, some other equipment that he had there. Just a super nice guy. And for his brother Bob to call me on a Sunday and go out into his shop, get dirty, cut a piece and all that, there are a lot more good people in this world than there are bad. All right, so like I was saying before, that bar goes in that down here, goes into that cast piece like that. That big set screw then holds it in place. And then this flips over. Well, it's all kind of out of whack here. That flips over like that, and it has to capture this inside it. And then, you know, I'm going to have to do some finagling here. This is a, a trip out mechanism for when you're mowing, when you got the thing down like you're supposed to, and you hit something, this trip mechanism will, you know, keep everything from breaking. That's what that big torsion spring's on there for. Well, in the up position like I have, it's not made to take a, a hit that way. You know, that I twisted the frame where it's meant to, you know, kind of flex this way. I flexed it the wrong way. It, it didn't flex. All right, well, I got the bar in there and I got everything, you know, the, the three bolts that hold it tightened up. So this spring and the wiggling around that I had to do down here, this spring became detached. This arm is supposed to pivot up when it's in the you know, the working position, this arm pivots up and you see that little bit of a bend? That bolt sits up against that bend and that spring holds that in tension and it keeps it from slapping open like it is. Well, I'm using the jack just because the weight on this side and the weight on this side means there's a, you know, it's just hard to spread both parts apart. So I use the jack, it's kind of in there precariously, but it's not doing a whole lot. Push that up to where it needs to be in the, in the running position. And then 
this spring is attached with a bolt. So you loosen up the bolt and then I'm able to wiggle the spring in. Now I'm gonna tighten the bolt back up. We should be good. Okay, tighten it up till the spring is just under a little tension. Don't wanna go bananas here. I don't wanna see any separation between the coils or anything, but it's got a little bit of tension on it. Well, I think we're back in business. So you can see I laid the, the uh, sickle bar down. I slathered it in oil again. I went ahead and went around everywhere, greased everything up, squared, squared a WD-40 on anything that, you know, back here my three-point attachment. A lot of those, you know, a lot of this stuff is metal on metal and uh, you don't want to put a heavy grease on there that's gonna, you know, attract a lot of dust and make it grungy. Use a real light, you know, WD-40 on all this stuff. Um, greased everything else up. I did top off that uh, uh, gear case just a little bit. Everything's looking good, so I think we go ahead and give it a try while it's laying down like this. Make sure nothing's uh, out of whack, nothing crazy, and uh, we'll see how it does. We're going to start it off nice and slow all the way down at an idle. Noisiest thing is the uh, shield on that PTO shaft. It should go without saying, but this is extremely dangerous. Don't have any pets, kids, you know, nothing around this. Be extremely careful. There is more than one old farm dog walking around named Tripod because of these things. I got my support rod on now. When I put that nut on, I give it a couple of little taps with a hammer to make sure it's good and tight. We'll go ahead and try it. Got a little wiggle, a little vibration. That's the way it was before. Run it up to 1500, it should clear out. Looking good. This is kind of a constant thing that I have to do. If I don't clean it off, then rather than running through the, the cutter, uh, the brush just kind of glances off this pile of stuff on here. So I do need to clean this off pretty regularly. Well, you can see where I've been. All the way around this field, up to the end of that where the wood stops there. It's working great. There were some really large diameter limbs in through here too. Uh, this was a locust. You can see where it ate through that. That's, oh, I don't know, that might be an inch diameter. Uh, down here, there was a lot of sassafras growing out. You see the sassafras leaves kind of shiny looking underneath. Um, some of those were pretty large diameter. So it's doing really good. I think, uh, I think we're in good shape here, guys. So if I helped you with this one, click that thumbs up button. You want to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button. And until the next time, keep on tinkering.